Bro, let's face it. It's a Radiance builder as well. And it, it's all right. When he has his rage, he can do stuff. I must say, though, if he doesn't, he's going to be stunned. I don't see the scariest IO pairings in the game. Tiny IO and Jara IO is here, good to go. Yeah, Tiny IO used to be, of course. It's still, it's now it's a little bit different, but whew, this is definitely looking to be a very spicy game for sure. We have a lot of combo coming up from OG. Very comfort heroes. You look at LGD. The thing I look at in particular, I love that Lizard mentioned it. The Nyx. This hero, I feel like some teams are straying away from it. Sure, it's been getting banned quite a bit of the times, but I look at the OG draft, and there's just so many inferences of damage. This Carapace is definitely going to prove to be. Quite a problem. Also, quite concerned in the mid lane. I'm not too sure how this invoker is in a fair versus a tiny. I also think there's a lot of easy options for tinies can just toss the invoker backwards. You're so slow movement speed. It's very easy for them to just bring one hero, toss back, easy kills. I mean, yeah. How, how do you sort of make that situation better? Do you just have to hope that it, that you have, you know, Tops is going to play super safe? I mean, it doesn't sound very Tops need to do right. He wants to make things happen. You, yeah, you're looking to Jarax or Sokshkas to sort of sit around that mid and just make sure that he doesn't feed as the invoker. I think Jarax is the key. I think the Ion Shelled Earth. Spirit, you throw that in with the cold snap, that's where you can try to turn those. But yeah, still could be quite scary here. Top lane, though, there's a very powerful duo. We see it so often, of course. And it looks like they are maybe going to put the Jakiro in the mid lane to start. We are seeing him kind of walking toward there. That might be the approach they do to try to set off the uh, Invoker to get a good, like, first few, first few uh, creep waves. I don't see much how hard it they can get. But yeah, this mid, the maybe tiny. Something that could really do a number against Topson's Invoker in the CS department. We'll see how well he can handle it here mid. He's I, I'm very concerned for his last hit. I mean, 64, uh, 54 base damage to 81 plus yeah, it's, it's gonna victory. Be rough. Yeah, not going to see him really get too many there. It's, nope. Every it, single one should be going maybe when he's got that tree up. Even yeah. when he hasn't, of course, yeah, as you say, just that ridiculous base damage on that tiny. Yeah, and they're, they're just sending Saksha bottom, so they're not actually going to be helping mid at all. So very concerned for Topson in that mid lane and bottom. We should see Chalice get a decent amount down here. We already see FY, or uh, Nova on the Nyx Assassin. Actually, also to point out, it is X Nova on the Nyx, not FY. So FY is playing the IOS. You know, we do see that happen, but he is going to manipulate the creep wave, make sure his tide under gets quite a lot down there. Same to be said for Seb. He's yep. already in position, grabbing a couple of waves at a time here. And we'll be able to drag those around. Does mean that you know, one of the pluses of this happening for PSG LGD is, you know, Jaira a lot of times is in a lane where he's struggling to get CS because someone is out denying him and has that greater base damage. This time he's only going to be really, really fighting up against the tower. So Arme, as long as he does the maths, knows how to prep the creeps, which he definitely does, he is going to have free farm on that safe lane. Yeah, and they actually bring Exnova up, so they're throwing they're this out. They're trying to at least here. Jerex is already level two, so he's pretty strong, but the IO allows us to put a decent amount of pressure. Seb is only level one. They cannot run. They can only walk with the iron shells. Jarex is going to try and roll in and help out, getting a bit of damage on Fi. In fact, Fi is falling low. Fi will be popped. Jarex is trying to get to him, but he hasn't got the movement speed. Fi is able to salve up, turn around, and it'll be LGD to take out Jarex before OG can do any damage to them. It is allowing Seb to continue on the retreat, but X Nova, a beautiful stun from the high ground, catches Seb out. Oh They're going to clean God. up both of them as PSG LGD put an end to those creep, stick it, creep skipping shenanigans that Seb and Jarex were trying to get away with. Oh, and the neutral, uh, the creeps actually get aggroed by the neutrals as well, so they're getting they're denied. They're taken away. Look at them pinging it. You see X Nova just pings up top. Uh -oh. Those creeps are dying to the neutrals. And the mid lane, as expected, double the CS here for maybe. Yep. Making it look very easy, as is the Tiny versus Invoker 1v1 matchup. Yeah. Tons of pressure. Bottom Chalice, he is being slowed down, of course, but he's got a triple creep, triple range creep under his tower, so Tidehunter is getting quite a lot as we see top. The missile on Seb. See, this time they are both level two. Yeah. So a little harder for PSG LGD to commit on, but still just keeping them away from the creeps, making it very hard for, for Seb to get any sort of pull rounds. And we'll go in and get the shell down once again. Goes for the surge, but next is going to be able to waste a fair bit of it with that stun. Jarek's kicking him away just a little bit. Desperately trying to make sure the Seb doesn't get caught out once more, yeah. keeping him safe and uh, allowing him to this time actually grab some of the lane creeps and be able to take them around. But they are denying a fair few of them there, PSG LGD, making sure that very little has gotten on that top lane for OG. Yeah, absolutely. I like that Ame goes for the level, you know, one point in the missile, of course. You've got the stun from the Knicks. You want some type of follow-up versus this Earth Spirit as well as Darks here. So that early point will be nice. Jerex continuing to try to just pull these creep waves as much as he can. And we do see these two wards placed out here by both sides, actually, to block the camps. Kind of funny. We've been seeing that a lot from teams right now just to make sure there's no cutting from axes and darks here so Jarex. Yeah, he's got the roll back up I should be able to get out of that as a oh no fy does manage to block him off in fact 
So with that in mind, they should, they'll be able to chase their stuns back online for Xnova. They're going to be able to take down Jerax again. The two of them, the support combo from LGD, causing many issues for the top half of OG's map. Yeah. Thompson's, ca Thompson's catching back up, though. He's 15-5. He is. He's doing pretty well now. And I see him going for the urn in this game. Of course, you're playing versus the IO in particular. You can throw that urn onto the back lines and just prevent a lot of that healing. And of course, you're plus wax, so why not? You have a lot of different ways to make it work well with your team, too. And they want to get it early. That's the big thing, too. It's sure, Earth Spirit, natural builder for it, but Jarex isn't going to be getting the farm for it. And they go X Nova. Was able to find an Invis rune up top. Did get scanned out, but Thompson can even get back in time. He pops the fairy fire underneath the tower. PSG LGD trying to dive. One more hit in a tree will do it, maybe. Able to secure the kill on Thompson as Shokshka was unable to force them away. As PSG LGD diving, getting away with these kills. Four to zero, 1k gold lead. This is where OG has to try to make some aggressive move onto Ame here. He's probably pretty wary, probably being pretty careful up here up top. We'll see a nice wave of creeps hit. Preserved for Topsons as Sokshka holds them outside of the tier one tower range. Yep, important that also, of course, it's building into the urn, but the raindrop is ever important. You're playing versus a tiny. You want a raindrop early on. On these side lanes, we can see both carries at the moment. Ame and Anna having pretty much free farm set. Let's get gone upon with that homie missile taking a lot of damage. Jerich tries to kick him away, but they're both going to go down. And he of it. The blocks again. He cannot roll away any of these times, Jerich. Each and every one of them being blocked off by, by the two of them up top. It's just kill after kill for PSG LGD on that top lane. His rage is on cooldown. He used it before. And with the three of them surrounding him, the rotation from maybe they'll kill off Anna as well. The lane's off to a bit of a disaster for OG. And there goes the subs, of course. <laughs> it's going to start out real quick here. Seven to zero. Woo. Chalice also getting involved on a kill there, too. He was jungling for a bit. He's having a good start across the board here for LGD. And maybe it looks like he's actually just starting to make moves around the map. They're giving FY the mid lane for the moment here. OG, they have to start being able to make some type of responsive moves here. They do have Topson. Urn is finished. He's starting to get some more levels up, so he can respond to some of these movements that are coming out. But Sokshka. Yes, the LGD was still down in the jungle here. They're blocking Sokshka off, away from any potential save from a shrine. Yes, getting caught slightly out of position. Didn't expect PSG LGD to still be down on their half of the map, but they were. They know how fast they want to play on the side of LGD. Sure, they've got a Tidehunter where sometimes you see these type of lineups. It's like, mm, we can't play too aggressively, but it's early game. It's laning phase. They have very dominant laning phase heroes. And yeah, they're continuing to bring this pressure on. And usually it's, it's been OG at this tournament that's been the pressure bringers. But LGD, they're reading it. They understand that this is not a lineup that can do that. They have a life stealer. This hero takes time. Invoker, okay, yeah, you're similar. Seeing, yeah, six minute smoke ups with the mid player, with maybe just getting the wraparound onto Thompson. Thompson cannot escape. Surely he tries with the tornado and the ghost wall, but there's the tree out just in time. Another kill for maybe, and another Seb in the all chat as nine to zero. 3k lead, PSG, LGD showing no signs of slowing down. No mercy whatsoever. They haven't been able to pressure either. They're usually, you know, Dark Seer plus your Earth Spirit. When you're playing against these melee carries, you tend to be able to pressure the lane a lot more. But the Io Gyro, they sustain so much, they're able to do just fine for it. And they brought a Chari lane, right? So Ame, almost level 7 now. Free farm on the Gyrocopter, free farm on the Tiny, and they're not slowing down. Look at maybe. He's just po positioned with FY. They want to go for plays. The top. They're going to start trying to make moves themselves. Oh, geez, Thompson has the setup onto Arme. The slow's there as well. He'll try and tell with the fact he's got the back oh, of the oh fight. Now Arme, God. he's just going to turn and start killing them off. And he comes to wrap around from maybe. Thompson will be able to get in the ghost walk in time, so he'll survive. But as, as we're seeing, because of the lead that PSG LGD has gotten out the lanes, these sort of moves that OG are going to try and make are so hard to do, especially when you got on a gyro that gets FY's IO back in range just in time. They were, they were pretty close. But it's always a risk. There's always going to be that turnaround potential. And OG, I mean, they were lucky just to lose the one there. Absolutely. That's exactly what I was going to say. Just that wraparound could have been disastrous if a reveal was there. Invoker dies again. They might even get more in mid. Another aggressive move. Jerex is here, though. So if they've got the damage to get any of these kills and returners, maybe pretty tanky and Xnova, he is able to walk it off as well. The two of them unable to turn uh -oh. things around. In fact, maybe just goes back up to the high ground with the stun from Xnova. Jerex, he's messed up. He hangs around, gets a little too cocky, and they just turn and kill him. PSG LGD have nothing to be scared about you at the moment. No, and they've already put down all these aggressive wards as well with their aggressive movement. So they're seeing all the moves from OG. It's 11 to 0 already, Owen. And look at this. The dream room for a tiny of hasted in the haste in the bottle. Only level 6 though still. Not hitting that level 7 yet, but level th uh, 3 points in the toss. So high amounts of burst damage for sure. 
And Anna, he's getting good farm. He's getting right? farm. He's still up there. He's got the Midas. So we've seen what Anna can do. Can still be a bit of a tough one. He has a very good matchup in this game versus all these heroes. He does have some good stuff, but the Tide Hunter is one that can cause a lot of problems for the Life Stealer. Yeah, it's for, for sort of the chaos that's been coming out from BSCLGD, both Topson and Anna have been doing their best at keeping it cool. There are these heroes that have these abilities to to help them get away. Every time Topson's been jumped upon, he's quick with the tornadoes, the ghost walks. He does have that chance to play his way out. And of course, Anna being on the Life Stealer, he's always going to have that rage to rely on. One of the reasons as well, I feel like PSGLGD have just, they've sort of let him be for now. They're focusing elsewhere on the map. This is a tricky place for them to make a play on the Life Stealer. They know if they can play fast enough elsewhere, they won't need to worry too much about Ana. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Ana, you see he's queued up the Armlet build. We've been seeing this a little bit more now. We're seeing uh, Armlet, and then they go back for the Radiant sometimes. This could be a build where maybe he goes against it. Maybe he goes for just straight physical. That Armlet, that Deso, that AC. Panel was talking about it. Physical damage on OG, limited. Way to push towers, limited. If they have that plus an Alacrity, it can change it completely. See, maybe. But the Haste having a bit of a bit of a go towards Jarex, but Topson is there to ward him off. So maybe we'll have to hang back, focus back on the farm. 700 towards the blink, making sure that he can go straight for these items that really allow him to go, go, go. Yeah, playmaking. He doesn't need to be the big farmer in here. He has, like you said, he has the IO gyro. The IO can also get to the point where he can always give the Aghanims too to the tiny. If he's tethered to him ever. He'll probably be sticking with Ame like 99% of the time though. But in some of those situations when he's dead or not in the fight. We could see a little bit different as top, Sep. Going on again. They chase him down. Homing missile inbound. Soshka trying to slow down the advance to Sep. Take the homing missile to the face. Mass TP is coming in though. Means the PSG OGD cannot stick around for the kill. Sep will be kept fine. As FY takes Ame back for a quick refuel towards the fountain. We'll see if they want to come back in on this. X Nova is there. Let's see if they bring the gyro and try and fight this. OG do have four. The ice path getting laid down. FY, he's not going to bring the gyro back. He's only coming back on his own. Tried to tether across towards the creeps, but the cold stab's there from Thompson. They take down FY as OG get the first kill on the board, but Chalice Ravage. walks in straight up. Ravage, he's caught the two of them. Soshka and Jerex, the two supports will fall. As Arme clears up the double kill. Seps hiding in the trees. Thompson gets the ghost walk off in time. Maybe he's still hunting. He can sense that they're still around here. Seb will manage to surge away in time. A PSG LGD, as quick as they lose a hero, they'll strike back and take two immediately from OG. They quickly they quickly made that decision that we're gonna fight. They had they had pretty much everything available for the side of LGD, so they just brought everybody up there to fight versus OG. And you see that life stealer is still staying down bottom, waiting till he can get involved. Once he has armlet, then he can start making moves. They have wait, they have methods of transportation for him, right? They have the Earth Spirit, so they do have that infest combo that can come out and bring targets down very quickly. Jax, we'll find maybe here as maybe starts to back away. He's able to toss back the Earth Spirit, but Seps on top of him. Got that Magnetize going as well. Ice Path won't quite catch him, and X-Nova can offer a stun. There's the Tether FY as well, making sure to come in with the save, so maybe he's fine. Chalice starts to head over. It's going to be hard for OG to try and die for any of these kills, but Jerex, he's, still he's trying. desperate to try. Rolls in, does manage to keep the magnetize going, or maybe with the tornado, the they've got him, they've got one, now they can turn for a second, and boy, gets popped underneath the tower as well. Army's turned up. With the help of Chalice, they'll burn down Sokska. OG, Thompson and Jerex, see if they've got anything else to offer. Jerex has to roll away, but he's blocked off. Chalice will block off the escape attempt, but OG with the three of them, they want to go Ooh. Anna. He's turned up to the fight, but X-Nova's stunned. We'll put a stop to Anna being able to chase anybody down. That magnetized, he just continuously spread it. I think he used all of his remnants. Yeah, he used Must seven, seven stone remnants to commit forward for that one. They do get that big kill though. And do they actually get themselves extra earn charges? They do. So even though he committed a few there, we do see Thompson was able to pick himself up a couple there too. And he will commit for the full veil, or for the full uh, spirit vessel in this game. Since he's versus that tiny, versus that aisle, reduce that healing. Now we can see here, X Nova, his stats, his plays. Yeah. Excellent so far this game, 2-0-9, involved in 11 of the 15, and hitting some phenomenal stuns already. And now this is the big timings, right? Okay, they've got the Maelstrom, this is the farming tool. The BKB is queued up for Ame. That one, just like Panel was talking about, you look at OG's draft, highly magical. This is going to cause a big problem when he's able to get that one online. Still quite a ways away, though. So I think they do need to start to make some moves, try to keep that pressure going onto that gyrocopter in particular. But the ward situation right now for OG, it's very limited. They have not been able to find opportunities to get out and put these wards out because LGD, they got all their wards out before because they're aggressive moves. So if they do go put these wards out, we know X Nova. This guy is maybe even the best warder in the game. He will take out your wards if you do place them under any type of vision at all. Yeah, PSG LGD just know exactly what OG's doing on the yeah. map. All these wards that got placed down so early, down, early on. See X Nova. 
the Vendetta getting eyes upon them. Chalice is going to TP in, does have Ravage available. They'll go for the EMP, it's going to come in before the TP completes. So Chalice still has the mana to play with. Now X Nova, he's going to go for the setup. No Chalice hesitation. Tops in, gets the two of them with the Ravage. Thompson's in trouble, he gets the tornado off. He's trying to desperately get away, but he's already been dusted. They've got the vision upon him, he'll turn with the cold snap, but he cannot hold back the three of them as Thompson will fall. X Nova still eyes on Soshka. See if they can chase this one down as well. Chalice is coming in. They have taken the gyro away back towards the mid lane where another fight could potentially kick off as they realize they only need the two of them to be able to chase down the Jakiro and get that kill as well. Man, Chalice is getting involved in all these kills too. Oh, I know. Kills yeah. He's Derek's? keeping across with Anna, but there's three people still here. They're trying to fight with Anna. So he's the tiny. It's This is a little risky here from OG. It's Jerex. He's just taken Anna on a, what seems like a bit of a suicide mission. Maybe Anna can make something happen and he will. He does get maybe. That's a huge kill. He'll take that. He will take that. Jerax died for this, and it was worth it. The haste rune ran out there, so he's able to turn and get that kill. And Anna, you see, queues up that death cell build. I think absolutely appropriate in this game. You need to be able to kill a target immediately in one type of disable to when you focus them down, and they just need physical damage desperately on their lineup. For the amount of kills that LGD does have, OG are being able to sort of keep the, the game level, in, at least in the net worth. It's been at that sort of 3, 4K for the last like five, six minutes. It's not getting any worse in the farm department because Anna is still able to keep himself at the top. The question is if that life steal is going to be enough. It really is mostly just Anna though. I look at Seb's net worth and that is my biggest concern here in this game. He is almost getting caught up with the five position on PSG LGD. This Darks here, still nowhere near that mech, nowhere near any of those type of items to be able to provide that extra team fight support for his team. And I look at Chalice, he's having a spectacular game. Thompson. He's up on the top four. He's going in, but this is risky. They're fighting around the shrine. They'll lay down the macro pile and the ice bar. Fair fight incredibly low. They'll get the IO, surely. They do. FY's down, but Arme's already way out of there. He spent his gold too. That IO actually has a full mech. So IO has a mech way before the Darkseer does on the opposing side. Is they're trying to play as quick as they can. As soon as they take down one, they're looking for more. They'll turn towards maybe, maybe he's by the side of Chalice and Arme. This is a scary place for OG to fight, but they're pushing on. Anna, Anna's he's in. on top straight away. Ice bar won't connect, but Jarex is able to get him with the roll. They're blocking off uh, maybe, and they have the damage to take him down. Seb with the Iron Shell damage gets the kill as OG showing that they will not be ones to sit at the side, even though the large majority Thompson. of kills for, Seb were, uh, for, for LGD were there in the start. OG fighting hard, getting Anna involved, and now starting to push on the towers themselves, despite being down 6 to 18. I love how they just bring the aggression. Sure, they're down, but yeah, they know they need to be able to respond. This is the OG that we saw winning the games versus EG, winning the games versus Secret. It doesn't matter. Oh, Ultis are on cooldown. Ah, you know what? We can still try to fight, you know, try to make things happen, make reactions go on. But yeah, there's a lot of farm coming out on the side of LGD in yeah, these team fights. All three cores. Yeah, the mech, mech already finished up on IO. I believe it's a full hood on the Tidehunter, and he's going for the blink as well. So yeah, lots amount of team fight that will be coming out for them. And we also did see um, maybe he went for the drum. So he wanted to get himself some more type of stack before he went straight for that blink dagger, it seemed. But he's going to have the blink now very soon after this. Now they have been able to kill off maybe a few times now. It's just sort of the other two, Arme and Chalice, that are the real issues for OG when they try and go for a fight. Especially whenever their Ravage is up. And if they can't get on top of Army straight away, he's able to turn and get his full skill set out. Top, they'll find FY alone. He does get the tailor off, but it's not going to be quick. As Seb, again, picking up the last touch. It's another kill for OG. They're just bringing Ana involved, even though, yeah, so ways from that Desolator or anything like that, he's got the armlet, and he's got Ion Shell plus Surge. So that always is going to be enabling you quite a lot more to make these invasive plays. PSG LGD, they have everything available now their ravage is up but og now they are starting to pick up a little bit of a little bit of space it's still 6k gold lead but seb now at least has the mech finished up at the base when he will be able to bring that one out just playing as five making sure that those early pickoffs that lgd were able to find have been put to a stop tp down bottom thompson the setup with the tornado onto x nova blocking him off the man is gone they'll get themselves another kill og working perfectly as a unit to rectify what was a, a very rough laning stage. Absolutely. And we see that that's a situation where you're like, wait a minute, there's a Nyx Assassin in our jungle. We're probably going to have some wards in our jungle here. Let's see if they're able to actually find any of them, though, because we do see a couple sentries placed down from Saksha, and he wasn't able to find any of the vision. And there's three deep wards placed right now into OG's jungle. Blinko maybe will be revealed. We'll see 
Yeah, PS LGD want to try and go for a big reveal as they now pick Blink Dagger up as well for Chalice. The double Blink's ready to go. They have the jump, they have the Ravage. They've got the big, uh, the combo breaker is the big one that I always name the Tidehunter. You're playing versus these like Darkseer, uh, Darkseer or you're playing against like a Magnus kind of combo. You have this Tidehunter, he's the one that disrupts everything. He's the one that just breaks what your idea of is of the team fight. This could be another scary move for OG coming into the jungle. They've got the ward here. They see the relocate happening right now too. Yeah, Empire's just gone down bottom to join forces with X Nova. Ame. And maybe to find Sep, but indeed back in the jungle. Ame's in trouble, and whilst this move's been made, sure, Sep, will, well, will he die? He will tick out. But back in the jungle, Ame's gone, and so has, is FY. I mean, FY, he, he relocated down there on his own, felt that he was needed to join those two to get the kill, but it leaves the Jara vulnerable, and therefore himself, when he's on the re-relocate back into his own jungle. And OG it was, were prepared. And it was the one it was one of the few wards that OG did have on the map. That one positioning there on the shrine. It saw the relocate happening early. They were already smoked up making the move. It's getting pinged out immediately. They know there's gonna be a ward there. But that was a great aggressive move there by OG. Now OG just making sure that any small sort of window of opportunity that's there for them, they jump straight through it. And now the full desolator is finished up for Ana. He's starting to pack quite a bit of a punch here on this life stealer. He is. He's keeping his cool. Top of the net worth. And he's always got the other thing too, that that bonus, right? If there are situations for alacrity. Here we go again. Topson. Starting to play around with Xnova. Each time the MP burning everything. The wall jump onto Topson oh, with a ravage as well. Chalice catches the three of them. Topson instantly buys back. Teeping over to the shrine to make sure that OG have a chance to take something in trade. Chasing down Chalice. Anna, he's got the damage with the Deso. Now oh going towards God. FY. FY is powered by the shrine, but Jerex rolls in. Blocks him off. It's a double kill for Anna. He will keep himself away from the missile, but it still connects. See if they can get more out of this. Xnova is dusted up. Topson, he's split maybe away from the rest of his team. As there's the setup with the tornado. Jarex is in as well with the Spirit Vessel damage. Maybe he's ticking low. Does manage to get the combo out. Gets the blink, blink as well. He's on the escape. Can Topson and Jarex catch this? He's hiding in the trees. Goes for the TP out. One touch would do it, but Topson can't get it in time. As he's back to the fountain, maybe we'll survive. Back in mid, Anna and Zeb continue to chase down both X Nova and Arme. Arme pretty separated from the rest of his team. FY's back in. Will come in immediately with the relocate, and Anna, no messing around from him. Rage and a TP out knows that he does not want to overstay his welcome. They really have to watch out how much damage this life stealer does. Even though he's hitting a tide hunter there, I believe the mech did not actually hit the tide hunter there because how fast he got chunked down, and they were able to chase over and over that again because of that buyback from Thompson. This Ana Life Sealer, he's ahead of the Gyrocopter right now. They have the BKB now for Ame, so he's much safer in these next few situations. But yeah, this Life Sealer proving to be an issue. It really is. And it was something as we said, you know, in the lanes, PSG LGD just focusing their attention elsewhere, maybe with the belief that they could kill sort of everyone else in the map enough times to sort of get to the point where they were far ahead enough to not worry about the Life Stealer. But looking at it now, they absolutely are sort of probably kicking themselves for not throwing more down towards that bottom lane because Anna has had a free game and he's taking over these team fights now. It's a, it's a good game for the life stealer, right? That's what we were talking about. The panel was saying it too. The juggling the life stealers are always the fantastic choices when you're playing versus a gyro. And then also there was a tiny and a Nyx assassin. Life stealer likes to play versus those heroes. In particular, Nyx, you just kind of you don't worry about about getting carapace, about getting stunned, of course. The tiny, you just eat him. Jax. On the hunt, the five-man smoke. We'll see who they can catch. Chalice. They're finding a lot of momentum on OG. They've got a Veil, two finished up for Jarek, so more team fight coming in. They have so much magic damage. That's going to be really good for OG there. But there is that BKB for Ame. And Jarek. He's going to lead in onto Jarek. Anna's going to jump out immediately. Look towards Xnova. Xnova with the spike carapace. Wall back off. Jarek is going to get left behind. Does manage to roll away. But the missile heading his way will finish him off. Surely on, maybe not set with the mech. The mech heal it was enough to keep him alive. So they'll actually manage to get Jarex out of that. And Xnova ticks out to Spirit Vessel Cold Snap. OG starting to look a little scary. They may be behind, but they're certainly not playing like they are. No, definitely not. I mean, Ana's not behind. <laughs> he pretty much has Basher finished up now after that armlet Deso. So sticking on target should be a little bit easier for him once he does have that finished up. And the first time this patch. Look at that. Some Harry Potter cosplay from Topson. Whoa. Which one was that? I don't even know the name. What's the name of that cloak? The invisible cloak or something? He's got it. The Glimmer Cape Invoker. Interesting. So there's a lot of my, good amount of burst damage and magic damage, but that's just so he can get away. And yeah. So, okay. Okay. 
has and his he, own defensive he, yeah. item. I mean, he's been struggling, right? I Every mean, time he's been getting caught at all, wow. he dies. This ma this production of magic damage might be enough if he gets hit by a stun. Sure. Live. Maybe. And I, I think it's sort of maybe just getting into the boat of, we just got to keep Anna alive. When his rage isn't available, if he can offer a Glimmer Cape, I don't know if he's going to want to use it mainly on himself. I think he's mainly going to look to just make sure that Anna is is going to stay alive throughout the fight. This is the damage at the front. After Thompson's got his combo off, he just has to make sure that Anna's safe to go in and not worry too much about being bursted down uh, when his rage is worn off. They are always casting, you know, they're always, they're always carrying dust in sentries, though, because they're playing versus a Ghostwalk Invoker, so they will always have the, the option to be able to find him, at least, inside of those, at least for LGD. As Sachiko shows his face, they get a ward down, and he just quickly dies. But they have definitely, they've definitely done a good job of bringing that lead down. It's down to 3k, it's 13 to 21. They're still suffering a bit, sure. The Dark Zone Invoker, you see their net worth there, staying behind, but on Ana's keeping up. And Seb's getting the items that he, you know, will still make a difference. The full Greaves yeah. is now there for the team. As Thompson just starts to walk straight in. Chalice, no hesitation, though, goes immediately for the Ravage. They're chain-stunning him down, and Thompson's walked into his death. As I mean, it's a Ravage and a BKB forced, I, I but he's guess. dead for 70 seconds. He just ran in. I mean, it's the wonders of the Glimmer Cape Invoker. It's just, you don't know what to expect from Thompson. He's got his own ways of playing the game. Well, this is where now, OG. You know, there's no Ravage. You know, there's, there's no, no BKB. Ravage. Try to make some aggressive move here with your Earth Spirit plus your Infest, and they immediately are looking for that on the Bounty Rune. And one of his greatest magic spells. Boom, look, no Ravage. It's disappeared. It's gone. Mm -hmm. Now the question is if OG can do anything with that timing. They have to try to make something happen. They really do. Sachka is getting spotted. He's putting a ward down, but it got, it got seen immediately. That's going to yep. get counter warded instantly. So maybe now, down bottom, he wants to push this lane in as far as possible. We see the tiny position down there because they know they want to be able to take a fight in the best position possible for themselves because they don't have their Ravage. So you see, OG, they're looking, they're hunting. Oh, and it's straight in. And as we saw there, the Basher, faster than the patch fastest. He is farming like he's never farmed before, Anna. And we normally expect great things from him, but this is just on another level here on the main stage. No messing around from this lifestealer. Head down. And just fully focused. Anna's farm. Are they going to commit for a Roche here? Because the Ravage is down. They have the Deso. They have high damage. And it should be pretty good sustain for all, themselves too. All part of Topson's master plan. They know this is happening though. LGDA, they are going already. Well, and they Topson, don't have a Ravage. Topson has to start teeping up toward that shrine. Yeah, they're a little scared, Seb. Oh. We'll go for the surge. We'll dodge the initial jump in from maybe. Jarex, he's going to try and roll towards the back lines. Get some more vision. Get some more... Control upon them, cancel some blink daggers. Anna now leads in towards X Nova. EMP's down as well, making Ooh, it hard for PSG to stick around, but indeed that's saved from maybe. Very nicely done, keeps X Nova out of harm's way. That's that's a nice play that they see how Anna's playing it. He rages and he's committing for it. He really wants to kill that Nyx before the fight starts. I still want to get in. Ravage 20 seconds. And Chalice will have it back. Xnova starting to throw in stuns for the sideline. Thompson's already leading in though with a tornado. Xnova puts the spike at Carapace, gets away. Homing missiles taken down by Anna. Roshan less than half health, but there's the jump ball. The three man avalanche. They've got the setup. Maybe crushes them all. Anna's dead. Soshka's gone as well. Neither with buyback available, so they cannot choose to come back to the fight. Thompson, Thompson. he's trying to stick around. Chalice, he's got that Ravage back online. He won't even need a potential for Thompson. If he wants to pop it, it would be a great time. And there it is. The three of them caught in the Ravage. Thompson taken down. Maybe gets the triple kill. The Magnetize is out, but already Roshan has fallen. Aegis claimed by Arme. They'll lose X Nova, but they'll take everything else around the pit PSG LGD. OG stacked so hard on the retreat there with the Rage on cooldown for Ana, so maybe gets the perfect jump. He got all three of them there with that combo. And what was looking like a decent shot for OG to come back just gets smashed down it quickly really by does. LGD. That swung at 7,000 gold so quickly there, and now they're going to pick up a full another arsenal of items. Level 18 tied, IO up to 15 as well. Ooh. That was the moment for OG to bring it back, and now it's looking real troublesome. And we saw just even when there's not necessarily the threat of the Ravage, it's Jax. Close. out in time. It's, it's just the fact that X Nova and maybe have just been hitting so many three-man stunts each yeah. and every time. One of the two of these heroes, they're going to be, they don't, they don't need a Ravage. They just do enough as it is. You have to be careful 
uh, for your OG in terms of positioning, yeah. as they'll look and find any chance to get in and get those perfect lines. Like, they want to be able to get this vacuum combo into your ice pass, but LGD, they're getting the jumps on them differently there, as Chalice will lose all of his mana. Let's see if they can finish him off by the Kraken Shell. Getting him out of the wounds, and in fact, FY is going to jump in and tether him, take him out. We're able to refuel but maybe the he's in. back in the base. Yes, maybe bashed up. Ice buffs, traps there as well. They will now be coming back in. Chalice does turn up, maybe pops the BKP. He's allowing him to walk out of the macro pile. Sunstrike's going to be there. But of course, with the points that he has, not nearly enough damage. They'll try and roll for an easier kill potentially. Look for X Nova, but I say that he's already out of the Sentry Ward. Do they have further vision? They do. Roll in, and Jarex pops down another. They'll, de they'll get the Nyx Assassin. Our oh, mate. Still poised on the top, seeing if they can maybe get even more out of this, but they will retreat. Pretty big item timing here for him, too. That butterfly finished up, makes it much harder for Ana to really focus fire. Immediately, you see that MKB pick, uh, queued up from Ana, though, once he sees the butterfly is finished. And OG, they're looking to make a they're play heading here. In. They know they've got the numbers. They've got their combos. There's Thompson in on the back lines. He's got the vision, looking for the setup. Arme would be a fantastic target, but it's not an easy one. The farm that he's got is hard. The BKB, if he had to start to walk away and in fact walk towards them, he can start to punch back with the damage offered by that Maelstrom and Butterfly. Ravage comes out. It connects. It did get onto Anna, but Anna was already sort of jumping in, so the Infest actually saves him from it. Jarek tries to run him away, but the Avalanche is in. Great macro pie, though, for Soska down on all of them. And in fact, Arme's burned down. They've taken the Aegis out of the hands of the Gyro. Buyback from Jarek. He smokes up as well to get back to the fight as quick as possible. So a support down, but they do get that Aegis off the Gyrocopter. Chalice was just trying his best to catch him right on the edge there, and he does. They actually are able to get that kill there, but that quick and fast, like you said, was able to actually keep him alive. Yeah, well, it was sort of as he was stunned as he was jumping in. Yeah, it was almost like it was exact so timing yeah. coming out there. We'll see here, Midas already paid off, so Anna's going to be happy as long as this game keeps going, keeps sailing on. He needs more items, he needs that MKB. It's just, the other thing is, can he do it by himself? His Invoker and his Darkseer are so far behind in this game. It is, it is a lot on Ana. It's so much pressure on him, and sure, we're talking about that Lifestealer, you can match up well versus a Gyrocopter if you're ahead. Once the Gyrocopter starts to peel ahead, and you have an IO bonus giving you a free Aghanims, it's going to start to change the tides even more so of that matchup. He's going to definitely start to get kited out too from that mobility as well. OG, they have to try to find their opportunities for those big combos. They haven't been able to find it much. They had that one situation with the Magnetize, but we haven't seen the vacuum into the Ice Path hit just yet. You can see here the net worth for Topson certainly falling off compared to the average. Yeah. I see a lot of those averages influenced by having a Midas, but even so, still not great numbers for Topson. It's been slow, but he's been purely focused really on just finding the setups, making those plays happen. This has not been a farming in Boca. This has been an invoker that's just been getting involved constantly and trying to make things happen alongside his lifestealer. A lot of the time still, even though he may be down on farm, it's still very annoying to play against. These EMPs, if he gets them out before the BKBs are popped, make it very hard for PSG LGD to fight into. But they obviously have yeah. ways to play around it. They do have to relocate. So they can quickly get someone back to the fountain, back into the fight. They have the Greaves as well. There are ways to counter those sort of plays. So. For OG, it's not going to get any easier. Yeah. I mean, this is just... It's its kind of like your natural top 10, right? He's always going to be the playmaker. He's always going to be running around pretty much whatever hero is playing. As we see pings coming out bottom. X Nova trying to set up for a relocate. The sentry gets placed down. Seb knows he's here. With the vacuum track back. Uh, Thompson does get caught out by the spike carapace, but Sokshko will look for the block up with the ice bar. X Nova's got to go the other way. They'll chase him down. There'll be no help for him coming from the rest of his teammates. So OG will get a free kill onto the Nyx Assassin. So that's, that's, the, that's the risk, that's the price you, pl you pay, you know, when you're looking right over the enemy's jungle. You know, X Nova knows that half the times that he goes over there, he's going to get caught out. Absolutely. And that was actually what, that was Seb carrying a Sentry Ward, right? I believe in that situation there. So, you know, offlaners, you know, sometimes you got to carry some reveal too. The MKB now finished on Ana. Okay. They so do have a, you know, a good shot with the damage still. You've got to hope for, for OG that they get on top of FY. They have get rid to. of that IO, because otherwise the, the sustain is still going to outdo the damage output that OG have, even with that MKB on Ana. And they have to find a way to stick on the target, because 
the IO with that gyrocopter. He now has the level 20 talent as well on gyro. So that movement speed, look at this, 515. So these two are going to be zooming. Also picks up a Yasha. So oh, even yeah. more so doubling down on just that kiting, moving away and just getting a little bit away from that life stealer. It also, of course, makes your IO move faster. So always going to be beneficial to be able to do that here. And he's going to go into the Manta. So those dispels, you know, sure, his BKB is there, but it's starting to tick down. It's down to seven seconds on Ame, and there's so many annoying spells on OG. I like the dual breath, they have cold snap, they have open wounds, a lot of different good things that he can use to dispel as OG. They're still positioning here in on the aggression with this timing, like you mentioned, with that MKB. They're still looking to try to catch something. But LGD, they're smoking. They're ready to fight. I mean, maybe he's got the full acronyms on the tiny, so ready to start throwing those trees in. As they're waiting to see who steps forward on the middle lane, but OG play it smart. Nobody heading out on mid to farm for now. Keeping the cells backed up, and Topson does have his own acronyms as well. So more spells, more combos ready to be flown out into the fights. And some higher level in particular, right? His Exhort's yeah. only level three right oh, now, so that yeah. bumps it up that little bit extra that, provi that it provides with the eggs. Let's see what they can find here. They're on the high ground. Smoke's going to be pop. PSG LGD know they're on the low ground. They've got the vision as well. On to Anna. Won't be willing to make a jump. They'll let them be. Arme just focused on getting that man to done. Just about 700 gold and it will be there. Topson still trying his best to spot things out. They have the ward in the high ground. Chalice It's going to go for the commitment. Topson tries to block off the back lines with the tornado, but already Solskjaer has been burst out. Will buy back. Maybe did pop the BKB for this one. BKB pops, see if OG can try and strike back. There is still the Ravage. OG still has that ward on the high ground there too. They're spotting all of LGD during all of this. Let's see what kind of a jump they can go for. Anna wants that bouncy room. Will be able to grab it. X over heads in, they've got the vision down. Sentry's down the high ground and they'll be able to take X over out. It's one down on LGD. Arme still trying to fight forwards. Has got the BKB ready to pop. Infest into the creeps down and jumps back out. There's the Ravage though. Catches the two of them. Anna's in trouble with Shredded. the cooldown. They've got him. Both. Anna and Sochka taken out on the back. They were able to find maybe Thompson and Jerex did get a trade. They know the BKB was on cooldown for the Tiny. They full committed with all their magic damage, but now Jerex trying his best to work his way around these three, but it looks like he's inevitably going to go down. The Centaur even turning he's against him. He's going to have another roll, but it's going to be blocked off as they'll trap him up. They will take another successful team fight, PSG LGD. OG just able to find a little something by getting maybe they're having out of it. A, they're having a lot of trouble getting their combos off. I saw there they were attempting it. I saw the pings coming out, and you see the ice path is laid down, and that's where you know that Seb wants to try to run in and get the vacuum on top of it. But there's an ion shell on one of his heroes, on one of his teammates. So then the ion shell gets procked off a carapace. It messes up the whole combo for themselves. They were trying to get that vacuum combo, but weren't able to. At least they got themselves that back line, but it costed them quite heavily. So the, the silver lining for OG being that these BKBs are going to get lower and lower. It'll be a little easier to play around them. We'll have to relocate down to the jungle as they're found. An unsuspecting Seb in on his own. He'll have the surge out. There's no further help coming his way. As it'll be a long run with the surge, but an easy chase down for BSG LGD. Another kill. The carnage continues 31 to 18 and just 36 minutes in. And SG LGD holding on to this 9k lead. And there it is. The IO has hit level 20. So that free agony is now being able to be given to that gyrocopter constantly. And Whew. The damage is already extremely high from Ame. This is going to make it that much scarier. And there we have it. A little surprise, well, first time this batch on the gyrocopters. I guess ob obviously, well, obviously not your standard pickup. But uh, definitely uh, an item that makes a lot of sense this game. Yeah, for sure. Just like the dispels. It's, it's going to be useful for those multiple reasons. Dispels, movement speed. As Roche, probably the next thing on the agenda, LGD. 20 seconds until their Ravage is up, and they're fine with just waiting this time, where they can just sit back and wait a little bit. But they're okay to take any type of fight that OG wants to bring at them right now. They are super powerful, and they are going to bring down that Roche so fast. They've got the Gush with the Gush talent for that extra minus five armor and a Solar Crest. So that Roche, if they walk in there and OG is not near, it will die before OG can react. OG has to be positioned around this area, prepared to fight. But they have no vision now inside of the LGD jungle. They have defensive wards, but no aggressive at the moment, as they have been taken out. I'm going to try for a smoke, but PSG LGD have everything ready to fight with. See what kind of a leading they can get. Arme 
would be the dream one to jump, but they know that there's going to be likely backup behind them. They'll try for an easier kill. X Nova's able to slide out to the side. Talis in with the three man Ravage. OG get absolutely shredded. They get the three. They look to get Seb as well as maybe has the control. Seb tries to run away, but there is no escape. Four dead on OG as PSG LGD just show how easy these fights are with the lead that they have as they'll go straight down the mid lane and look to start to take some of the barracks away from OG. PSG LGD there knows that the pressure is so heavy on OG to go and look inside of that Roche pit and commit forward to try to get a kill before it starts. They're the actually game. just looking to end the game right now. That, that combo, the Ravage with the tiny throw as well, the tree volley coming in. Oh man, and they just quickly bring down this Rax. All heroes are just so massive on their lineup, PSG LGD. As OG, they'll still remain in the game for now. But the Rax going down, PSG LGD able to turn towards Roshan. It's gonna die so fast. This is without the Gush actually hitting it. It got blocked and it's just some tree volley as well, why not? A matter of seconds and Roshan's gone. He did, I got the snipe. He, he got, actually he, got the he last got the hit. Snipe, Thompson. <laughs> All right. It's a little bit of something. Hey, you know, that's... He'll you take that. Did, was he inexperienced? Ooh. I actually didn't get to see if he was. Oh, he's level 26. He, I don't know, he, was, he was pretty far. I don't it, know, he's pretty, pretty far. range. Yeah, he was pretty far, but maybe. Yeah, it looks like it probably... It probably I don't know, maybe he did actually. But hey, it's a Roche Snipe. You know, he gets like, you get a lot of style points for those. It's a little bit of something, but still a long road to recovery if they want to try versus LGD. 15,000 gold lead. 40 minutes coming across soon, so map control becomes more important at that 40 minutes. These double runes are coming out, and LGD already are prepared anyway. They have a DD in the bottle of the gyrocopter at the moment. Topson right now trying to keep the split push going on up top to force some reactions, but LGD, they are more than ready to fight. 30 seconds for the Ravage. See so what Topson can get on this. And maybe he can be, will be popped. Anna trying to find those bashes. We'll get the one of them. To X Nova as well, Jax. He's there on the next assassin, but Chalice is him focusing down Thompson. Thompson Reload. just getting smacked down by this tide. Will turn ice upon ice action. They found X Nova. Now Arme's ready to hit back. Jax trying to split the attention of Arme away from the rest of his teammates as they will separate from one another, OG. And that, for the moment being, will keep them all alive. This time they'll get X Nova, but they won't lose anything for it. They're all getting split up here, and OG, they're trying to get some catch here. If they can, there's still the Aegis, of course, on Ame. LGD now starting to position themselves to gather more. He's got the Ravage back up, won't even need it. Soshka just gets Anchor smashed down, jump into the river. Anna does turn, it's a bit of a bait, but FY pops the cheese and with the tether gets maybe back up to full. Ame's Manta style, Deathly Blast comes out for Chalice. The Ravage catches the two of them. Anna cannot escape. Thompson's in trouble as well as they'll chase him down. Sentry in the river spots him out. They'll take both cores, immediately buybacking on both of their heroes. Anna and Thompson trying to get back in on this. They'll get the drag back vacuum. on, and maybe with that vacuum, they focus down the tiny. There's no cheese on FY now to save him, as they will find maybe. Again, it's something. It's not a lot. It's so it's so different. The, these, the fights, the way they're going, it's because OG, they were getting a position where they're like, OK, we have five, and they only have three. And then LGD repositioning themselves on the high ground. They get the four, the four man advantage, and they get that beautiful look, Ravage. Thompson. Thompson. He's already behind the tier two towers, starting to tease around with him. He has the setup with the tornado. They're in and upon him. The slowdown and why they didn't expect that at all. Thompson, just everywhere where, where they don't expect him to be. Sometimes in the most blatant of positions when he wants to be ravaged, but times like that, he's immediately pushing back past the tier two. Double buybacks. They've got a buyback, Chalice. He's got that ravage once more. In he goes, takes the refresher off. He's caught OG by surprise. And they escape the combo. The, combo. the four man vacuum wall is strong. Soska's eyes part from Macro is down, but the damage from Arme is too much. Can they get Thompson out of it? The stun will end. Trees are being thrown out, but Thompson, he falls. He's dead for two minutes. No buyback, Anna. He's got rage back up in a second, but Chalice, he's in, chasing him down. There's there's the Rage ready to go once more. Anna desperately trying to toggle himself out of danger. Is he's running. PSG LGD though, the they missile. are chasing. He has a shrine. In goes the missile, arm lifts up. Is the heal enough? No, the barrage of trees come in. Three dead on OG and two calls down for two minutes without buyback. PSG LGD now in perfect position to look to win the game. And there's no way that you can expect something like that on the side of OG. You're feeling very confident walking up on that high ground. You're like, oh, Ravage is on cooldown. Chalice busts out the refresher, the double insta buybacks, and it quickly gets turned. 
And Chow I mean, Chalice is also packing quite a punch inside of these he fights, is. too. He's got the, da the damage down for quite a while now. Let's see what they can do. Jarek's just trying to keep their attention away from the base, but it's not going to work. He's dead as well. No buyback on the Earth Spirit. Down the mid they go, just left to Sostja and Seb to try and slow this push down, but it's not happening. The tier fours are going. As PSG LGD this game, as hard as OG may have fought, they just had the lead for the whole of it all. In they go, tossing Seb back. They know that they've got this game in hand. They'll take some extra kills as well. As Sashka falls, Seb as well. GG is called, and PSG LGD take game one, and they never fell behind.